Hey up everyone. Today I'm going to show you a look into one of my long term projects. It's taken far longer than it should have, but it is finally almost ready. I will let you listen a moment first. This motorcycle arrived as a mass of oily boxes, and I'll be honest, what I knew about reverters was all about the later Zane era bikes. Steadily, I worked through the boxes and managed to source or make anything that was needed, and the result is now finally fit for the road. As a final shakedown, I got SPR Racing, who used to race a Laverda SFC, to see how it performed on the dyno. This wasn't a full dyno run, just a way to get a better idea of what it would do under stress and what adjustments to fueling would be needed. The photos will give you an idea of the journey and will show you the progression of the project. You can see the engine here as it arrived. It had never been opened and hadn't been run since 1979 that I know of. I had been assured the engine was a good one and I know the guy it came from so I knew I could trust that statement. One of the first jobs was the wheels. Barani rims and alloy spokes front and rear carried the twin disc front brakes and the drum rear brake. Front discs were mismatched and I went for these drilled replacements from all bike engineering. The rims were all polished and the drum brake set up cleaned and set up right. The engine block isn't light so it was a case of lowering the frame onto the engine first. I had sent instructions to the powder coaters to put a thick coat on so mounting holes etc had to be reamed out for the bolts to fit, but this was the beginning of the journey back to life. Once the wheels were back on and I could see the basic form, I decided I really didn't like or want the central collector box. It's bulky and ugly and I thought I could do better. Getting the angled sections to fit so that I didn't lose the main stand was a challenge, but eventually I got there and the various sections were TIG welded and the seams ground back to make a push fit over the headers, and the section for the reverse cone Norton commando silencers to fit over. The headers and link pipes were then all ceramic coated, and instead of just buying some, I decided to turn my own exhaust header clamps from billet aluminium. It gives the silencer a slight up tilt, but they sit slightly flatter than the original pipes. You can see the handmade billet points cover here too. Just another personal touch. The front forks were in remarkably good condition and springs were strong. I simply rebuilt the standard units and polished the legs before reassembling the front end. You can see next, I just threw some fake Olins on while I rebuilt the original Seriani rear shocks. That was another challenge, but worth it in the end I think. Then, it was time for the brake hydraulics. New seals and pistons in the master cylinder and calipers were done, and I enamelled the calipers to get the finish I wanted in the end. You can see some of the process, and how it looks with the original master cylinder sat on the bars. I did consider doing a master cylinder upgrade, but in the end I decided to go with the original. I even enamelled the Brembo logo on the calipers as just another personal touch. What do you think? Next came the indicators. Now the original CEV units you can see were the poorer quality later plastic chrome ones and I just don't like them. But in the bottom of one of the boxes I found a pair of early CEV units I had never seen before. After doing some digging it seemed they were only used in the first year or so and finding a second pair seemed to be impossible. I did eventually find a guy in Australia that had two but he knew how scarce they were and didn't really want to let them go. I did find some original chrome CEV units, but after polishing them up, decided to keep the two round back ones because they looked so good. I think they are similar to the ones used on the early A-series Kawasaki, but I'm still yet to find another pair the same. 
I replaced the original mountings with stainless bar hollowed out for the wiring and threaded to mount into the front fork shrouds. The rear ones, the bar mounts behind the number plate. Both were much stronger and neater than the originals. The original Stanley lenses were all used. You can see some of the polishing that was done here. One thing I began to see was the quality of the Laverda castings. The aluminium is not resin impregnated like most are now. The metal is aerospace quality, but that means that it does tarnish quicker. It does clean up again very easily though. Next, it was the carbs. Again, a full rebuild with new gaskets, etc. And after the sonic clean, the tops and float chambers were polished. I kept all the jetting standards to start with until I had a better idea of what we needed doing. New cables and boots finished the job, and you will see the results on the dyno chart later. Getting all the cables routed properly was a serious pain in the proverbials. Every time I thought I had it right, something else just wasn't. It took a while. The switches was another case of butchery. I had some switches, but much of the plastics were broken and brittle. In came some GT 551s that were almost identical, and with some transplant surgery, it was all working. Next, was setting up the gear selector mechanism. New gaskets and much patience eventually worked, and the gear change is now positive and slick. As it goes, when I was replacing the primary drive chain, I discovered a missing tooth from the oil pump drive pinion, and wanted to sort it, so another delay finding parts followed. Then, when I came to fit it, I timed everything up as per the manual. However, when I went to start it, I got nothing. The point backing plate wasn't standard, so the ignition timing was way out. Counting teeth and refitting the oil pump drive in the wrong position finally got it running. The carbs had been bench set, but as always, that's only half the job. You can hear it running here. As the bike is run more, it is improving with each ride. The dyno at SPR Racing gave me the last bits of information I needed and I will get rid of that small flat spot in time. It hit 44 horsepower and 40 newton meters of torque, and more importantly, the mixture was fairly right all the way through, with them being a little rich around 4,200 RPM. That will be sorted before long. It hit just over 110 mile an hour in the end, which is almost certainly faster than I'll be riding it most of the time. As things progress, I will try and film some more footage. You can hear from these short clips, it has a thunderous sound and will raise more than a few eyebrows, I'm sure. Here's to the future. The future is orange, as they say. I'd like to give a special thanks to SPR Racing for their specialist expertise. Also, Grant de Guid for his help putting the new wiring link together. And a special mention to Wolfgang Harter from British Columbia Car and Cycles for all his help with parts. Ride free everyone.